DNP3 Basics Lesson 3 DNP3 Message Structure This is the third lesson on DNP3 Protocol. It discusses the DNP3 Protocol Message Structure. This is the last lesson that deals with DNP3 structure and concepts without presenting any actual data. We will get into that in the next lesson. Every DNP3 message starts with an 8 octet data link layer. Most, but not all, follow this with a 1 octet transport layer and an application layer. For those of you still stuck in the 1800s, an octet is what used to be called a byte. Most DNP3 messages have three layers, data link, transport, and application. The transport layer is only one octet and is never sent without the application layer. Most people do not like to give the prestigious title of layer to a single octet. So the transport is sometimes called just the transport function or transport header. But whatever it is called, it performs the same transport function as will be described. Each message includes usable data and security octets. Security octets are inserted at various places to make sure information does not get altered in communication. Security octets are typically excluded from counts of octets in a message or layer. For example, I said the data link layer contains eight octets. This is true, but there are also two security octets for a total of 10. Security is a carryover from times when all communication was over, often noisy, serial lines. Data sent over these lines can be changed by the noise. This does not happen over an IP network that has other means for guaranteeing data is not altered. DNP3 protocol can be transmitted over serial lines or an IP network. Even though security codes may not be needed for IP communication, they are nonetheless included. This allows the same message structure regardless of the physical medium, which makes things a lot easier. Each security code is two octets and calculated as a 16-bit CRC code over preceding octets. The formula for calculating a CRC security code is not important. As said, a two octet CRC is inserted at the end of the eight octet data link layer. For the rest of the message, the transport and application data, a CRC is inserted after every 16 octets. A final CRC is inserted at the end of the message to cover leftover octets, if any. All discussions from here on ignore the CRC octets. Remember they are there, but we pretend they do not exist. There are two types of DNP3 messages, depending on whether or not there is any application data. Messages without application data include the data link layer only. Messages with application data include all three layers, data link, transport, and application. Data link layer only messages are used, but not often. They provide some useful functions for startup and housekeeping operations. A sample data link layer message is shown. You can see the eight octets of the message, hex five through the last zero zero, followed by the two CRC octets, DE and 8E. We will talk about content and values in the data link layer more in the next lesson. Except for data link layer only messages, the purpose 
of a DNP3 message is to send application data from one device to another. One block of application data is called a fragment. A fragment can contain as many as 2048 octets of data. A fragment is sent in a series of DNP3 messages called frames. The term segment is also used for a frame. The maximum number of application octets that can fit into a single frame is 249. Since this is not large enough to hold the largest possible application fragment, it may take multiple frames to send one fragment. To summarize, each data link frame starts with a data link layer header. Those that include application data are then followed by a transport octet and application data. The application data block sent in a sequence of frames is called a fragment. The maximum number of application octets that can fit in one frame is 249. The maximum number of application octets allowed in a fragment sent from a master to an outstation is 249. This always fits into one frame. The maximum number of application octets allowed in a fragment sent from an outstation to a master is 2048. When an application layer message contains more data that can fit into a single frame, multiple frames are sent back to back. The transport octet controls frame sequencing. The illustration shows transmission of one application fragment requiring three data link frames. There are some cases where application data required to respond to a master request is more than 2048 octets. The outstation responds to such a request by dividing the data into multiple application fragments. The outstation responds to the request with an initial fragment of data up to 2048 octets. The information in this fragment must be able to be parsed by itself. That is, the master must be able to process the information in this fragment without the need to see anything that might be in a following fragment. When processed, the master sends a message to the outstation indicating it is ready for the next fragment, which the outstation then sends. Information in this fragment must also be able to be parsed without retaining any information from the prior fragment or knowing what is in a potential third fragment. Note that the outstation must wait until one fragment has been handled by the master before it sends the next one. The process repeats in case there is a third or subsequent fragment. The following shows more details of a DNP3 application fragment transferred in two frames. Note sequencing of the data link transport and application data. Application data is further divided into an application header, object group and variation, qualifier, range, and finally object data. Classes from here on will discuss the DNP3 message components in this order. Keeping this as a reference for future lessons will be helpful. In future lessons, we will finally get to the point 
of discussing actual communication messages. To help, we're going to use a communication tool called Cdone DNP3. A sample screenshot of a communication session is shown here. Messages from the master to outstation are shown in green. Messages from the outstation to master are shown in blue. The top portion of each area shows data octets in the data link frame. CRC octets are enclosed in braces. The rest of the screen shows, at the left, the meaning or interpretation of each message. Data link interpretation is shown first, including when present, the transport octet. Following this is the application header information and below that, object data. The area at the right of each line shows octets from the frame that contain information corresponding to the interpretation at the left. This completes the lesson on basic DNP3 message structure. Points presented were most DNP3 messages contain a data link, transport, and application layer. The name for a basic DNP3 message is called a frame. Some simple messages contain only a data link layer. Most messages also contain application data. A block of application data is called a fragment. A fragment is sent as a sequence of frames, all of which start with a data link header. The maximum number of application octets that can be sent in one frame is 249. The maximum number of application octets that can be sent in one fragment is 2048. It may take several frames to send one fragment.